Uh, you feeling a little richer these days? Well, you're part of the $100 trillion richer. That's American's total household worth. Now, of course, a lot of it's been buoyed by the markets and uh, higher home evaluations. And, of course, this week got a little bit more so with all the major market averages up uh, appreciably, even with some of the concerns that have been out there. So what the heck is going on out there? Let's get the read from Gary B. Smith and Melissa Armo. Uh, Melissa, this just seems weird at face value that the markets would climb with all these worries. Then I see a $100 trillion worth figure, and I figure maybe it's just people feeling more robust and bullish that is driving. I think the market's getting used to Trump, but I think it's really surprising that we are rallying into this meeting with North Korea. And this is a big week coming up next week. We're right at a critical level for the S&P and the Dow. If we get over 26,000 in the Dow, we're going to make new highs. And I never thought that would happen this summer. And let me just say, if we make new highs in the next few months this summer, that is so early and unexpected to me for the way the price action looked back in February when we fell, we will explode right up until the next presidential election for Trump to get going and maybe reelected again. I mean, he might actually get reelected again well, if the Mitt market Romney, runs up like I that. I think earlier said that. I, um, but, uh, you know, Gary, I'm wondering, all the years I've, I've known you and talked to you, you know, you've talked about meltdowns and melt-ups, and a lot of people look at what's been happening of late, and does this have a melt-up feeling to it? <laughs> we keep climbing up, 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 up. What did Warren Buffett say? He thought we were in the sixth inning. I right. think that... that and I about, heard that a baseball game is nine innings. <laughs> is that two thirds through it? That about feels right. Right now, you so know, this the, longest bull market about in history is going to get longer still by a third. I, I, I think so, and here's why. You know, the, you know, the expression politics is local. I think the economy is also local to people's pocketbooks. We have low unemployment. We have, you just talked about the household net worth. We have housing prices, at least per the Case-Shiller Index, uh, has eclipsed the highs back in 2006. People have jobs, wages so, are virtually climbing. Virtually no one's underwater like these. Exactly. Right? Okay. Well, there, there might be there still. Might be, but right, right. It's but not but like in a national. In, exactly. In general, people aren't, you know, being foreclosed on. Um, Everything's working right now. Could there be a black swan out there? Of course, always. But right now, I, I'm with Buffett. I think we have a ways to run right now. And, you know, a lot of these tax cuts haven't even kicked in yet. Um, Buffett also mentioned, you know, we haven't even gotten to our heavy hitters yet. What was he referring to when he says that we're two-thirds through something or that bigger things could come that could propel this still higher? Well, what do you look well, at? Well, meaning, just like Gary just said, corporations haven't even filed. Neither have individuals filed for 2018 when we have the tax cuts. Now, people, if they got paid on their W-2s, are seeing the savings. But companies, maybe if they've reported quarterly earnings, pay in ahead. But no one's filed or required to file until April of 2019. But individuals in high-tax states, like the one you're in right now, mm -hmm. I mean, they'll, they, they might be surprised that they're not getting as much as they wanted because their deductions are limited, right? Right. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll, yeah. obviously, we'll have to see. I mean, obviously, we have the, the elections coming up in a couple of months. That's going to affect it. But overall, people do vote their wallets. Yeah. If things are good, if people are at work, if they are looking at their 401ks and the market continues to rally and they're blowing up, blowing up, their 401k is getting bigger, people feel safer. They feel like, I can go out and I can put money or spend something on a credit card and things are going to be okay. Instead of when people voted Trump in, they wanted change so badly, they didn't care at any cost, they didn't care that Trump never was in government before. People, when it comes up, are going to say, hey, we don't want things to change. Things are kind of going maybe pretty good now. Let's, we don't want any change. And a trade war, the prospect of that doesn't rally you? No, I, I, I don't think so. You know, it. look, I don't like what he's doing with trade. Right. I would like no barriers. I would like, you want to dump your goods. Something. You would like, you want to dump your goods in here and we just uh, give you bills with old presidents on them. I'm, I'm happy with that. But that's not going to happen. I think Trump, we talked about it just before we went on, he has a way of landing on his feet. Is this some, you know, amazing, genius negotiating strategy? Who knows? But it tends to work out for the guy. I'm going to start giving him the benefit of the doubt. And he did bring to people's attention, even those who didn't know, that, that, that there are a lot of countries that rig the game. And, and, it wasn't fair. He had to take a hard stance. If he didn't take a hard but stance, with Canada, I mean, he's taking a hard syrup. stance, and we're going to see what's going to happen. They need us just as much as I we need them, he, and that's the truth. The other thing is, I think he understands one thing. He understands that in the G7, in NAFTA, we're the big dog, and he has shown the ability to do one thing the past presidents have not done. He's willing to say, "This isn't working. I'm walking away." 
Oh, boy, it's like going in the car dealer and, and saying, you know what, the price isn't right, I'm leaving. They come right in after you, please, you know, buy the car. I've done that. <laughs> I don't, I don't say, we don't want you to be a customer. I'm in New York, I don't need a car. Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah, I rolled it in, rolled it in. All right, guys, we'll see what happens. But right. to their point, if the markets are rattled by all these nerve-wracking developments or what would normally be considered nerve-wracking, they have a funny way of showing it. A lot more on that after this. In the meantime, there is new video of James Wolf leaving court. Now, he's the former Senate staffer indicted by the Department of Justice over these alleged leaks. And man, oh man, those leaks and who he was leaking to and then the IG report next week. You can't make this stuff up, it, uh, Well, even though a lot of people make stuff up after this.